So, hello everyone, welcome back to the week 10 of this course. So, we have been doing a lot of basics in this course and last week we finished our discussions on semantics. And during semantics we also talked about various applications where you can use topic models and other uh, things like distribution semantics and lexical semantics. So, starting from this week we will focus mainly on applications. So, we will use both the basics that we have covered and some new methods for solving very specific tasks. And for this course, we have chosen the tasks that are very, very popular in the field of NLP and text mining. So, this week we will start with, uh, so we will start the first two lectures with entity linking and then we will go towards information extraction. So, today we are starting with entity linking. So, so what is entity linking as such? What is the problem there? So, we, we were discussing sometimes in the, even in the starting and in some lectures that when we encounter text data, lot of entities are mentioned there. And it would be helpful for a task if you know what are the different entities that are used in this particular text data. Now, there are various knowledge bases and resources where you have a good list of all these entities and some descriptions of these available. So, suppose you can find out from a text what are the important entities here and if you can link them to a knowledge base then you can do a lot of further inferences over these. For example, this entity is a person and there in the in the database you will have a lot of information about this and you can make use of all this information. So, this is as if you are having some background knowledge about various entities. Given text data, when you encounter an entity, you try to link it to the knowledge base and then you can extract the background knowledge about it and use that for different tasks in this particular data. So, this is the problem of entity linking. So, we can define it in this manner that entity linking is the task of identifying all mentions in text of a specific entity from a database or an ontology. So, what we are assuming here, we have a database or we can also call it knowledge base or ontology where I know what are the different entities that I that I need. And with that inform with that entity I will have some different sort of information. Uh, for example, in Wikipedia think of all the Wikipedia pages you have. You can call, you can think of all these Wikipedia pages as the entity pages and you have lot of information about the entities in each page. So, this is my knowledge base. Now, when you encounter a text, there your problem is find out if a particular uh, n-gram or a sequence of phrases, sequence of words together correspond to an entity in the, in the Wikipedia and if so, then link it to the Wikipedia page and this is uh, the overall idea of entity linking problem. So, a uh, lot of different databases can be used. For example, researchers have used Wikipedia a lot, then Yago, Freebase, etcetera. And the task of entity linking when you are doing, you can break it into two different phases. So, one phase would be you find out from the text what are the appropriate and candidates or entities that should be uh, linked. So, this is called the entity uh, mention detection part. Identify what are the mentions of entities that should be linked to the database. And once you found out what are the important entities, the next one would be to appropriately link it to the database. That is the second, second part, reference disambiguation or entity resolution. Now, why would that be a problem? See, same as we discussed in the case of word sense disambiguation with the same entity name there might be different reference ok. So, so for example, New York it can be New York city and there might be a movie with the name New York, there might be a TV serial with the name New York. So, when in a text you have a mention of New York, you want to know whether you want to link it to the New York city or the film or TV series or something else ok. So, there is a problem of uh, disambiguation here and this is also to be handled when we are solving the problem of entity linking find out what are the appropriate entities, then appropriately link them to their uh, entries in the database. So, what are the things or challenges that one needs to handle in this problem? So, one is name variations. So, the same entity can be written in many different ways ok. So, for example, simple things like Hillary Clinton. So, in a, in a text you can all you might write it with only the name Clinton with the last name Clinton. Okay, or maybe there is a middle name also involved there. So, you can write it in different different manners. So, your problem is you have to you have to handle all these name variations and all these should map to the appropriate 
entity in the knowledge base. And then the second challenge is entity ambiguity. That is the same string can refer to more than one entity. So, this is also we discussed New York can refer to multiple entities. So, both of the, the challenges are to be handled in the problem of entity linking. So, now uh, for, for this course what we will do we will take one particular database that is Wikipedia as our uh, base database. So, so we will always link a text to Wikipedia. So, this will be our database by default for this lecture and the next lecture. But in general, you can use any other database and you can accordingly modify your approaches for that. So, one particular terminology. So, if you are using Wikipedia as your knowledge base, then this task of entity linking is called Wikification or Wikifying. So, you are taking a text and you are trying to Wikify that. So, that means find out the entities that are important and then link them to the, their appropriate Wikipedia pages. That is the problem of Wikification. So, now let us go in detail about this problem, what are the different uh, processes involved and what are the different techniques you can use. So, here is one example of uh, entity linking or wikification as such. So, on the top what you are seeing, you are seeing a research article okay, from physics domain and you are having, uh, so this is like an abstract here. So, you are having text such as region this is removed due to a geometric gradient onto a meta surface and so on. So, there is a text involved here. Now, what, what is the task? You are trying to wikify that. So, that means you are trying to identify what are the ent uh, important entities and what are their uh, pages in Wikipedia. So, if you see on the bottom, so you are, you are finding various links. So, it is been optics. So, your optics is linked to some, some different page and an example is shown with degeneracy. So, link so, this is linked to degenerate energy labels that is a page in Wikipedia and you can also find out some specific content about that page if you just uh, take your mouse over there. And that is being done to many different words here optics, control, light, photon, helicity, angular momentum and so on. So, that means these words are the appropriate mentions and they are then linked to their Wikipedia pages. So, this is the process of Wikification. Similarly, here you are seeing a news article and so in the article, so with the news you are seeing various words are uh, hyperlinked. So, there you can click this word and go to the appropriate Wikipedia page. Uh, so, for example, here in Baghdad, so it will open the Wikipedia description of the word Baghdad and you might just want to read the summary or if you want to know more, you can click on this open in Wikipedia and go to the Wikipedia page. So, now, so, so we can also see why this might be very important application. So, so you can, you can talk about reading news articles or scientific articles or any other text, it can be tweet text. So, when you are reading the article, there might be many different terms that are very, very specific to the domain and if you are not an expert in the domain, you will not know what these terms stand for. So, then what you will do, you will take these terms and try to search in the dictionary or some on Google or some or maybe on Wikipedia. And that will require a lot of time from your side to fully understand that article. So, what is Wikification doing? So, it is helping you in that given a text, it will automatically identify what are the important entities and it will link the Wikipedia uh, pages. So, it will avoid, it will do all the task for you and you can even see the description in the same page or you can go to the Wikipedia page and read more about it. So, that helps a lot in doing, uh, in, in enhancing your reading for a certain art news article or scientific article. Additionally, it can also help if you are applying to certain task on that text. Okay, you, you want to get some semantics from the text, then also having this knowledge that this entity corresponds to this Wikipedia entity might uh, help you in getting some knowledge from the Wikipedia page and take it as a feature for your task. So, this is also another application for this Wikification. So, we have seen for scientific articles and news articles, you can also do it for very short text like tweets. So, tweets have very little context. So, here you are seeing that four different tweets, go getters and here the problem is what does this getter refer to. So, in Wikipedia there are two different mentions that are possible, Florida getters football or Florida getters men's basketball. In this particular context, it refers to 
Florida Gators men's basketball and you want to link it to that particular entity. Similarly here, we stay up hawk fans. We are going through a slump now, but we have to stay positive, go hawks. So here you have entities like fans, slump and hawks and they need to be uh, linked to appropriate entities. Again you are seeing there are multiple possibilities and you need to find out what is the appropriate mentioned in Wikipedia. Same with the other examples that you are seeing here. So you can do it for also for short text like tweets. With tweets there is a very little information and you want to find out what is the appropriate entity that this tweet links to. So and you can also think of many other application on your own where this entity linking is important. So now how is it actually done? So for that let us try to understand what are the different phases again, what do we need to uh, do systematically. So what are the common steps? So first step is you to determine what are the linkable phases and this step is also called mention detection. That is from the text find out what phrases, what n-grams are to be linked. For example, we were seeing words like Baghdad and here getters were the, were the mentions that were to be linked to the uh, knowledge base and this, this is this approach for detecting these words is called mention detection. Now once you have found out what are the appropriate mentions for to be linked, then what will be the next step? The next step would be you have to identify what are the possible candidates to which it can be linked, right? Like in the previous slide we were seeing getters can link, can link to two different uh, entries. So identify what are the possible entries and this will call, this is called the link generation part. So you have to select what are the candidate entry links and what are the all the links you have to list somehow. This is called link generation part. Now once you know what are all the links, then what will be the next step? You have to find out what is the most appropriate link from all the all this set and this will call the uh, disambiguation part. So this is use the context to disambiguate what is the appropriate link it this entity should be linked to and you might also want to filter, you might want to improve your whole task. And we will see some examples for all these. How do you filter and improve your task based on this? So these are three main steps. Sometimes you might combine the first two steps also. That is, when you are detecting the mentions, you are also finding the candidates at the same time. So that is also possible. So now, so let us let us see these steps again in the context of wikification. So so you are having a text where you have this sentence, degeneracy is removed. Okay, and there are some words before and after. So what is mention detection? Find out that the word degeneracy is to be linked, it is the appropriate mention. So that is in green in this slide. So that is the mention detection part. Then second part would be link generation. Find out all the appropriate, all the possible phrases, pages in the, the uh, in my database. So here you can see that degeneracy occurs in mathematics, in biology, in graph theory and degenerate energy labels. So there are four possible links. So then you have a task of disambiguation that among the four links what should be the appropriate uh, uh, page to which this entity should be linked and that will be the third step and that is the disambiguation and you will say okay this is the fourth one degenerate energy labels is the appropriate uh, entity page for my for my mention of degeneracy and these are the three steps for this entity linking. Now, so we might uh, like to understand what are the some of the basic, basic features of Wikipedia that can help us in designing an algorithm for wikification. So Wikipedia, all of you know about Wikipedia and you have been reading Wikipedia for many of your, uh, for, for knowing different concepts and all. So, so what do you see in Wikipedia? There is a page like that, there is a title and certain text about the page and you see there are various links also. So there is an article. then. Additionally, there can be some redirect pages. So you might have come across you are searching for something in Wikipedia and it, it redirects you to some other page in Wikipedia. So these are also a uh, lot of redirect pages in Wikipedia. Then there are disambiguation pages. We will see an example in the next slide. And there are category template pages. They tell okay, what are the different categories in Wikipedia, in ca this category, what are the subcategories. And then there are some admin pages. Now what is important for our task is that there are lot of hyperlinks in Wikipedia. Okay. So what happens in Wikipedia? So different words and phrases are linked within Wikipedia itself. 
So, you will see that in Wikipedia article, certain concepts have a hyperlink and you click on the hyperlink and you will go to the corresponding Wikipedia page. So, there are a lot of in links and out links that are going on within Wikipedia. So, uh, so United States for example, whenever you have a uh, phrase like United States, you may have a link saying it is linking to the United States TV serial or American TV show etcetera. So, you will find if you will see the source this will be like that of the hyperlink. So, you will have a uh, double parenthesis to denote what is the appropriate entity inside the source and that if you see the source page you can find out and these are various hyperlinks that you have in Wikipedia. Then you have a lot of disambiguation pages for some entities where a lot of different mentions are available you might have also categories in disambiguation that in the in the category of entertainment what are the possibilities in the in the category of politics what are the possibilities and so on. So, like here the you have for the entity New York disambiguation page. So, you will have as places what are the possibilities then media ent entertainment and you will see that in each category there are lot of entities that correspond to this uh, the main entity New York. So, you will see in, in these cases is the same single entity can map to maybe 15 20 different pages in Wikipedia and they are nicely categorized in this disambiguation page. Categorization may or may not be there in various pages. So, so what are so what so what do we need to know about the whole architecture lot of pages in Wikipedia and each page has some name that will be the identifier may, may be the identifier then lot of text involved in the text you have various hyperlinks where different pages are linked to their own Wikipedia pages and some entities will have their own disambiguation pages where you will find out what are the different uh, ways in which this entity can be used. This may be also under various categories. So, now so once we know about that so let us say some small statistics so that is we talked about word net for sense disambiguation so that we have given a sentence we want to find out each word what is the appropriate sense in word net it corresponds to. So, in word net how many entities we had we had roughly 80 k 80,000 different entity definitions and 142,000 different senses. On the other hand Wikipedia is much larger repository. So, in Wikipedia overall there are 4 million entity different definitions and this keeps on increasing and there are 24 million different senses. So, this is much much larger in, in comparison to uh, WordNet. So, our task is from all these 24 million senses find out given a text what are the entities import that are important and what which of the sense they, they correspond to. So, now let us see what are the simple measures that we can think of for the three steps or let us say only the two steps the mention detection and disambiguation. Mention detection that is in a text whether a given engram is an appropriate mention or not. So, so, what we will do initially we will see some sort of measures that can be taken simply by the Wikipedia structure or Wikipedia data. So, let us see. So, let us talk about this mention direction part How, whether a particular phrase is a good candidate for a mention. So, so what will be a good measure for this? So, so if you think about using Wikipedia structure we can say that ok. Wikipedia has lot of pages. Suppose I find out this particular n-gram how many times it occurs in Wikipedia and among whatever times it occurs what fraction of times it is actually linked to something ok. So, so wha what is the idea if in if a word is linked much more number of times that means it might be a good candidate for mention. If it is not linked many times that means this may not be a very good candidate and this is a very simple criteria that you can use from Wikipedia. So, and this is called the key, key phraseness of a word or also a phrase. So, number of Wikipedia articles that use it as an anchor divided by the number of articles that mention it at all. So, that means I will take a word w and I will find out 
what are all the Wikipedia pages where it occurs. Okay, so it occurs suppose in five Wikipedia articles, article one, article two, article three, four, and five. And among the five articles, say four and two, provide a link with this W. So where W occurs with the link to some Wikipedia page. And A4 also this W occurs with a link to a Wikipedia page, but A1, A3, A5 do not provide a link. So here W occurs without a link. Okay. So now, so what is this key phraseness? So key phraseness is what fraction of the page in Wikipedia is it linked? Wherever it occurs. So it occurs in five linked it to. So key phraseness will be two by five. Okay. And that is a good measure in that it will tell me. Okay. Whenever I encounter a new phrase, W how many times it is actually linked in Wikipedia and use that to detect if it is a good mention at all. So, this is a very simple measure. So, we will say uh, how many times it occurs and among whatever time it occurs, how many times it is linked to another Wikipedia article. Now, here we do not worry about whether it is linked always to the same Wikipedia article or multiple Wikipedia articles. The only thing is it is linked to something, then we will consider it in the numerator. So, this is a key phraseness for a for a word. Now, what can be a good measure for disambiguation? So, now let us again think about it. Can we use Wikipedia to, to find out a good measure for disambiguation? So, so what can be the simplest measure that you can think of? So, I have a word and it can correspond to multiple entities. Uh, so, for example, so let us say uh, I have a word W and in general it can link to three Wikipedia pages A1, A2, A3. All are possible reference for this Wikipedia page. Now, what can be a good baseline to find out what is an appropriate uh, disambiguation page? So, for that I can again use Wikipedia. So, I will see in the whole Wikipedia whenever W is linked to something. So, it will be linked to these A1, A2, A3. What fraction of times it is linked to A1? Suppose it is linked to A1 90 percent of the time, A2 8 percent of the time, and A3 2 percent of the time. And this can be an, a good measure to say, okay, 90 percent of times W links to the article A1. So, this so by default I will say, okay, W will link to A1. So, that can be one simple measure, and this is uh, called the commonness. So, this is commonness. So, I will define the commonness for a word and a concept. Concept here are three concepts, three Wikipedia concepts. And what is the definition? So, the fraction of times a particular sense is used as a definition in Wikipedia. So, number of times word is linked to C divided by number of times word is linked to any C prime. Okay. So, like here it will be 90 divided by 100. Suppose they are 98 and 2 pages. So, 90 divided by 100 is the uh, commonness for W and A1, 8 by 100 is the commonness for W A2, and 2 by 100 is the commonness for W and A3. So, this is another simple measure. So, so you have you have seen key phraseness and commonness. Okay. And they are simple measures derived from Wikipedia. So now let us see one example. So, here is one text that is like a report of a match and what you are seeing? You are seeing words that they are colored and colors depend on the key, key freshness score that is from 0 to 1. So, dark green is key freshness 1 that means it is always linked in Wikipedia. So, here like Bulgaria national football team is roughly always linked to Wikipedia it has a high key freshness. Some words like here the knockout are not always linked, they have a very low key freshness. Now, what about the commonness? So, now you will take a particular entity like here Germany and you will see what are the all candidates candidates like Germany, Germany national football team, Nazi Germany, German empire, similarly for world cup it can be FIFA world cup, FIS Alpine Sky world cup, 2009 FINA swimming world cup, world cup men's golf etcetera. These are the various can and candidates and you are computing commonness by saying how many times this word is actually linked to these, uh, these entities divided by any number of times divided by the number of times it is actually linked. 
and this gives you the commonness. So, Germany is linked to the Germany, the word Germany like 94 percent of the time, Germany national football team 1.39 percent of the time and so on similarly for FIFA world, world cup. So, now from there you can choose by default the word the sense with the highest commonness. So, like 1998 FIFA world cup will come up here, FIFA world cup will come up here, but there will be a problem with this entity right. The Germany will return the word Germany 94 percent time, but in this case the appropriate mention is Germany national football team and will not be able to detect this. So, so this is the idea about key freshness and commonness and clearly you can see if there is a one there is one problem with this approach ok. So, now so is it always the best decision to use either the only the commonness for linking the a particular entity and so what do you say. So, from whatever we saw in the last page is it always the best decision to use commonness? it cannot be right, because what you are saying whenever a word w occurs in any context ok, I will always assign it to a 1 by default because it has the highest commonness. So, that means, I am never using the context in which the word w occurs by default I am assigning it to the category or link a 1. So, that means, I will always make some mistakes right. There will be some pages at least where it should link to a 2 or a 3 and in those cases I will still link it to a 1 by default. So, I cannot design a very good system by this approach. I will uh, there is a like there is always a chance of making, making mistakes because you are taking the, the the default case and this also corresponds to the uh, to the to one of the baseline that you can use in word sense disambiguation that is you take the sense of a word that is most uh, probable sense that is like a baseline, but this will never help you in designing a very good system because you are doing it independent of the context you are always linking to this page. So, now what we will see in the next lecture is that can we also use the context to improve this method instead of using commonness can we use something from the context to find out ok among the three what should be the appropriate uh, link for this word quantity. So, so what did we see? So, commonness and key freshness are simple measures they can help you to design a good baseline that will work most of the times, but cannot help you build an accurate system because you will always give some wrong links and we can see why because there is a default to the most probable link ok and whenever the word is used in, in not so probable links it can never be correctly assigned. So, we need to use the context and that is what we will see in the next lecture that how do we use the context around the word to disambiguate the links.